If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want funding for your deals, regardless of what your banker, your hard money broker or lender or your mortgage company says, don't go anywhere because in just a moment, I'm gonna plug you into that funding. I will tell you folks, I have got a very, very special guest on the show today. I'm gonna introduce her in just a moment. I promise you in all likelihood, you have never heard this kind of real estate investing training or this strategy in real estate investing probably anywhere else on the planet. So welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And before I introduce my special guest, how in the world am I going to deliver my promise of plugging you into the funding? Well, you definitely want to check out my upcoming live event, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference, which is right around the corner. And you can read all about it and uh, get registered at Jay Connor. You're going to put it right here on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes or Google Play, it's www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. It's right around the corner, folks. The event's filling up. Don't miss out. Go check it out. So with that, I want to introduce you all to a very, very dear friend of mine, also a student of mine. And as I said, this particular individual, I have never heard anywhere else uh, that utilizes this strategy of real estate investing. So with that, welcome to the show, Dixie Decker. Hello, Dixie. Hello, Jay. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have you here on the show. And I've been wanting to have you on for quite a while, but I know your schedule is rather busy with everything you've got going on. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here on the show. So folks, Dixie. You got it. The crazier, the better. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tell you folks, as I said a moment ago, Dixie has got this strategy of how to triple. Yes, at least triple the rent amounts that you can bring in on single family houses triple those that revenue over what you would traditionally get if you were just renting out a single family house you know the traditional way so we're going to spend the time here folks on the show zeroing in on that getting dixie to reveal to us what this looks like now due to the time frame of how long uh this show is dixie's only going to be able to give you like the thirty thousand foot view of, of what this strategy looks like. Uh, so let me go ahead and tell everybody, Dixie, uh, at the end of the show, uh, you have got a, a free training, a free online class. Yes, that sir. really dives deeper and that really reveals all the, the secrets of, of really this, uh, utilizing this strategy, right? You've got that? Yes, sir. So they just follow that link and they can check out that information. And then there's some free goodies that they get along the way for some checklists and some daily tools they can use in their business, whether whether they do student housing or not, any real estate investor could utilize them. So um, that's a fun little give for anyone that wants to go through that class. Excellent. Excellent. So everybody stay on here to the end of the show. We'll be giving out the um, the uh, website link to where you can go to Dixie's free online class and training and really uh, dive deeper on this strategy. So Dixie, let's go ahead and utilize the time that we've got. Before yeah. we get into this very unique strategy that you have, as I said, I haven't heard anybody else doing this. <laughs> um, I want us to take a couple of minutes and, and let our viewers and our listeners really hear your story. So uh, I know we got to know each other maybe what time flies by three years ago, four years ago, something. Probably. Yes. I don't know. And tell everybody what your world was looking like prior to us getting to know each other and you coming into this world of private okay. money and real estate investing. I can do that. So two things real quick though, Jay, before anyone runs off because they heard that scary word student housing. Um, I call it a little myth buster and everyone thinks this student housing niche is for apartment buildings 
And so I want to make sure they heard, we're doing this with regular single family houses. So it's reachable for anybody, no matter where they've started in their business. So yes, you can use it with apartments, but that's not how I started. So when I tell my story, um, they'll see where I was and why I didn't start with apartments for sure. And then secondly, when you hear that term student housing, everyone just says, oh my gosh, who would deal with college students? And I say, oh, all day long, give me college students because their parents are involved and their parents sign that lease. And so they are on the dotted line and I get back a drop dead gorgeous house every single time. I don't have one or two income earners losing a job and can't pay their bills. I've got three or four parents on a lease together paying bills. So before they run away from this podcast, <laughs> they should stay in tune. Yeah, well, so, I'm glad you brought that up because first of all, you know, you have this strategy of, you know, tripling at least the rents that you would ordinarily get, but you bring up a good point. Regardless of the business you're in, regardless of the kind of return that you can get on your time and your financial investment, uh, you want it to be enjoyable. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have fun with it. I, I really have fun with it. Uh, I have to openly admit, I don't do a lot of it hands on myself anymore because I've built a team to do that for me. But if I could pick any tenant, this is this is what it would be. It's a lot of fun for us. Yeah. So well, and another thing that we didn't didn't mention on your free online training and class that you're going to offer, uh, on that training you actually dive deep into how to automate the business, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's important. You don't want to be the one doing it all the time. You can't grow a business that way. So I discovered that very quickly. And um, it's something that I, I do really well at delegating and enjoy that too. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and also on the training, I mean, you know, you've become quite an expert um, in uh in in attracting a lot of private money and private funding for for your business and uh on your training uh i think you also go into your techniques that you use for attracting private money as well don't you? i do believe so so they get a little snip of that uh you know that all started with you of course and in even knowing what that term private money means and then we just ran with it. And based on our age and, and where we started, we had every hurdle in front of us that you can imagine, you know, every objection, everyone is scared, someone's going to ask. So we put our little our own little twist on it to kind of fit fit us. And it's paid dividends beyond our wildest dreams by just implementing the tools that you started us out with. Yeah. So very good. So let's go back. What is your what did your world and life look like uh, leading up to coming into my world of private money, coming into real estate investing? I mean, I know what it looked like, but I, I, want, I want my viewers and listeners to hear this story. Yes. So it, it's not as fun as what um, what I portray today, of course. And it's for the lack of a better word, taboo topics nobody wants to share because uh, you're embarrassed or humiliated for where and what you went through. But in in 2000, and I'll back up just a smidge past that. Um, I was raised, your name is everything. You do the all-American dream, you go to college, you get the corporate job, you have the retirement package, you have a beautiful credit score and you can go to the bank and get a loan and put a little carpet in a house, maybe paint on the wall. And we called that a rehab, right? So my dad taught me how to do that with my gorgeous credit score and uh, my day job. And amongst that, I got married and I had children and I dropped out of college in the midst of being pregnant. Um, and I took the back seat to my life. So I let my ex-husband make those decisions in what he wanted to do and where he wanted to take things. And, and I don't do that anymore, but that's where I was at. So after about 10 years in that relationship, um, I, knew, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. 
And in saying that, the reason for those things were there was multiple factors that I could see everything going down the drain and and I'd fought hard enough to keep it all together and to, I guess, hide it from public. So there was, um, you know, he, he had an alcohol problem, uh, a drug problem. There was emotional, mental, and physical abuse. And there was other women in the marriage that I didn't know about. Um, and my light switch moment of no more was when my daughter witnessed the last time he put his hands on me and I said, no more. It doesn't matter what my family believes. We took vows and I believe that's what you do in front of God and your family, but I can't hang on anymore. And I knew that was it. So when he left the home, I realized why he was home every day at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And that was because that beautiful credit score I had, had earned about $150,000 worth of credit card debt in my name I wasn't aware of. Mm. So for a girl that created herself off of everything you're supposed to do, as so many people do, I was devastated. And at the time, I had a job paying $30,000 a year. He left me with everything. Oh, everyone says that's great, but let me tell you what that is. <laughs> yeah. The kids full time, which is good based on his situation of where he was. I was okay with that. Um, but I was left with a uh, almost 4,000 square foot home on five acres. I was left with all of the auto payments, the credit card payments, and everything my beautiful credit score had done. And if you can do quick math, $30,000 a year isn't paying for any of True. those things. Yes. So I was eating at my parents' house uh, dinner so that mom would pack a to-go bag for the kids for the next day for school. And that was the best way I knew at that time to make sure they were taken care of and fed well until I could sort out this financial catastrophe I had myself in, as well as go through the divorce and keep the kids healthy and sane. And that's a lot. So um, that was 2010, 2011, when all of that kind of started spiraling and sorting through that mess. So as I had mentioned, my dad had taught me how to use my credit score and my job to get these little bank loans and do traditional real estate, a little here and a little there. When you go through this kind of situation, you know that light is off. You are not what they call bankable anymore. No banker in his right mind is going to give you a dime when you are freshly divorced, single mom, two kids, more debt than you can accumulate, you can even make money for in 10 years. Um, it's, it's over. And so I really believed that that little passion I had for real estate was never going to be accomplished because of what I had done or the choice I had made, let's say. I will tell you, I know there's a lot of your listeners out there that have these same things they've gone through. I now call them my badges of honor. So wear them proudly. I wouldn't be where I am today had I not gone through those things. So um, I've collected several of them. No college education, bankrupt, single mom, divorced, you name it, I've got them. And it's okay, right? Um, Amongst my marriage, I had become a realtor and I had gotten my mortgage license at one point. So I knew a little bit about real estate, but again, in the traditional manner, just like you, Jay, when you tell your story, you were in the traditional world for years and then your lights went out just right. in a different way. Yeah. So that's when I met you and, and that was in 2013 actually is when I met you. That was something I had in common as far as okay, he got cut off. So what did he do? Well, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And that was the first glimmer of hope that I had for a future of anything more than a $30,000 a year job. Because for the lack of a better word, I felt like a real loser at the time. Like, what would people think of me if they really knew what I was carrying around with me? So that's kind of the shortest version of that story. And life is totally different now. 
but that's when I met you and another mentor of mine. And I learned to buy those houses with no money and no credit. And after hearing you, I went and raised $85,000 within a week of getting your program. And that really set the tone for success for us. When I say us, I have a partner, Brandon, who's getting ready to be my husband this year as well. Yes, uh, yes I know. I know. So um, hey, right now, let, let's stop right now. <laughs> um, I know, I know like two weeks ago, <clears throat> you and Brandon went down south somewhere. <laughs> Jamaica. To, Jamaica to scout out where you all are going to have this amazing wedding, right? We did. <laughs> and, and you located a spot, right? We did. We're ready to go. I say a spot, not a spot. Like I'm sure it's this luxurious resort down there. Yes, it is. (laughs) But but of course, I've known you and Brandon now for quite a while, and I'm so excited that you and Brandon are engaged, and uh, and he's just an amazing guy too. He is. Too Too bad we don't have him waving in the background back on the show. But anyway, uh, back on track now. So, uh, pick up where you left off on what things are now looking like. Yes. So now, um, and you know, the listeners are going to miss so much of this just because of the time commitment for the podcast, but now we're in a totally different place. Um, Brandon and I have been working on this business since 2013, since meeting you, let's call it, that was the start point. And we began dating during that time frame, and that has led us up to this, um, engagement but aside from that, in the business world, we have, I was, I was doing a little math before this. Um, for this year, we collect 276 paychecks every month. Well, let's stop and right there. Let's stop right there. <laughs> hold the phone. Hold the phone. So you get 276 rental checks, paychecks every month. Every month. Nice. And they nice. average, the average is probably about $525 per check, $525 per check. Yeah. Because we have some, when you are in student housing, and that's a term only for us. So in the real world, we're just single family rental landlords, okay? But in this world for student housing, <laughs> If you're very close to campus, we get $600 a room in our area based on our statistics here. But as I get a little further away, I start charging a little bit less. So I have some at 400, 455, 556. So about 525 is my average right now. And I don't have that many properties though, Jay, because I count my checks by the bedroom. Right. So... In the beginning of this, I said I have everybody on one lease, but I collect several checks off one property. Right. So in this strategy, you don't have to have this huge scaled business that is so popular these days on social media and all these different gurus that are out there. They talk about scaling and scaling and scaling, and then they end up with 30, 40 employees. I run the whole business with two and a half employees. Wow. And 276 paychecks. That is doable all day long. So I tell people, you really have to figure out what you want. Do you want that big scale business and all the employees that go along with it? Or would you like a strategy you'd get to, what? what's the famous saying? The less I do, the more That's I make. That's right. Right? So... That's what it was for me. I said, I don't need 400 properties. I'm good with 60 or 100 if you even need that many. Because for the viewers out there that was in my position just five years ago even, how many of those checks do you need to replace that $30,000 day job? It's not very many. You got that right. Yep. So I have people go, I just need one. And I'm like, yes, you do. Right. <laughs> Start with one. And, you know, my, my oldest daughter is 15 now. And so she came to me the other day and she said, mom, and she's a smart little girl. She's number three in her class in high school as a sophomore. So she's super smart. But she said, 
I got to get a job because I'm about to turn 16 and I need gas money. <laughs> and I said, uh-huh. Yeah, you do. She said, but I was thinking if I had one of your houses and I had the cash flow off one house, I have to work 25 hours a week, every week for the month to make the same amount of money you make off of one house. Smart gal. Uh-huh. She said, so why am I getting a job again? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, has she already started looking for her first house? Yes, she has. And she's already signed papers on her first house with her mother. They're with her. Um, but she is interested in it and going on those trips to talk to sellers so that she maybe never has to have that real job. And, and we'll see what she does. It's each to their own. And I'm a big fan of they're not going to listen to mama, but they might listen to somebody else. So, hey, she might show up at your uh, conference one day because she's going to believe you over me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Dixie. That's awesome. Now, you just said something that I know my viewers and listeners want to hear about. Okay. And that is, and, and, and this applies to no matter what the strategy is in real estate investing, whether, whether, you know, the investor wants to do wholesaling or buy and hold or flip or sell and rent to own or wholesale or work for equity, doesn't matter. Yep. In this world of real estate investing, as you know, Dixie, we got to find the deals. Got right? to find the deals. Yes, we got sir. to find the deals. We got to find the motivated sellers. We got to, you know, negotiate the deal, etc. So, and I know things change. You know, yeah. what was working for me three years ago on right. finding motivated sellers, not all that is working nearly as well today. Correct. Same thing with buying, uh, finding buyers. You know, for my houses. Um, so let's take if you will mm -hmm. a few moments and drill down on okay. today you know what are some uh and i know there's more than one or two or three but what are some of your top favorite ways right now to find motivated sellers discounted properties etc okay so i hate to be the the spoiler alert here for my niche specifically. Now, when I say my niche is the student housing, we still do all the same things you do, Jay. We still do lease options. We still do owner financing. We still do wholesaling. We still rehab. I think I've got nine rehabs going on. Wow, right now. that's awesome. I know. I am crazy officially, but you know, we keep that pipeline full of different deals all the time. So even though my favorite is student housing, and that is what I've built off of for my keepers, uh, the majority of them, you do have to find the deals. And the cool part is for me now, I am in a smaller town. I have a lot of new investors that get started by hearing these podcasts and listening to other gurus. And I don't really put myself out there in my hometown with the exception of my local RIA, my real estate investors association meeting. What I have found, I used to spend a fortune on marketing and you and I chatted about this at an event one time, Jay, I used to spend a fortune on the signs and the yellow letters and pay-per-click and all of that stuff. I now am using my wholesalers and my new investors who are spending their money, but then they don't know how to close the deal. I tell them, I'll, I'll get you paid. Bring the deal. Let's close the deal. And you, you tell me what you want to make. And if it's doable, I'm going to pay you. Or it's just not a deal. So what I have found is turning that competition into a coworker, let's yep. call it. Yeah. And they're making money. I'm making money. The marketing is still going out. I will tell you some of the best marketing that is successful right now in the RIA is pay-per-click or Google AdWords. Oh, that really? seems to be turning out a lot of deals right now for wholesalers. And then 
if they can't close those on a wholesale cash discount, we're making term offers. We're lease optioning them and getting sellers to finance them to us. Excellent. Because now they're getting their top dollar. Just we need, what is it? Time, right? Yep. So that, I hate to be the spoiler alert for people, but I'm not spending very much in marketing right now. Well, that's fantastic. And what you're doing is you are leveraging other people's time and leveraging other people's money that they're investing on uh, on the marketing. Yes. And then you end up turning that into a win-win. And, and you know, I love your story you're telling here, this piece about locating deals, because like, for, for example, so I'll share this real quick. Yeah. Uh, in my area, our area is so small, we don't even have a RIA. Yeah. Okay? I mean, <laughs> My closest real estate investing association is an hour and a half drive from here down, yep. to Wil down to Wilmington, North Carolina, which is like apples and oranges, totally different market from, from what we are here, uh, geographically speaking. But most places where most people live, they do have a RIA. And mm -hmm. so, so, here, so here's what I want my viewers and listeners to do. To hear this and don't miss and don't miss this. And that is when you as a real estate investor understand what Dixie learned how to do very quickly, and that is the private money piece. Yes. You don't have to worry about the deals. No. You don't have to worry about the deals. There's there's deals everywhere. You wanna there's know what's you wanna know what's sickening to probably most of your listeners? I have about $350,000 in private money right now that I need to use. Me too. Right? So Me people too. say, I never have money for the deal. I can't find enough deals for the money right now. Right. So that's key. Once you know how to raise it, you can have too much of it, as far-fetched as that sounds, because I would have never believed it five years ago, but it's true. <laughs> Yep, yep. It's well, true. Well, and Dixie, you and I will collaborate on this. We got two ways, and I recommend that our that my viewer and listeners take advantage of both. This private money thing to get connected on the private money thing. In just a moment, you're going to give out, or we're going to give out the uh, URL link, the website link, to where they can get your free online training and class. On that, there's the private money piece, and also, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this show, right around the corner. Uh, I've got my upcoming live event uh, at the jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. You come to the event and get connected with the private money. And, you know, and that's why I teach. And I'm sure you remember me teaching this as well, Dixie. I focus on what, you know, people that will go to a conference or they'll go to an event or whatever. And it's like, okay, where do I start? What do I do first? It's so simple to me. If you focus <laughs> on the money, the yes. money comes first. You don't have to worry about the deals because, I mean, if you got the money, it's easy, like like you're doing at your RIA. I mean, you yep. stand up, you stand up during the, you know, you got the haves and that. Does your RIA you go to has got the haves and the and what they want and the ask and the wants and all that stuff? Yep. Or usually yeah. they'll say, "Who's selling something? Stand up and pitch your deal." So I stand up and I go, "I got three hundred thousand dollars worth of money. I need to buy something." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, look, I need to buy something. And, and, and my guess is whenever you do that at the end of the meeting, you got plenty of people coming up to you, right? You got it. You got it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, oh, my lands, Dixie. I can't believe my <laughs> lands. I can keep talking to you. I can't believe that we are just now out of time on the show here. So as we promised everybody at the beginning of the show, and listen, folks, I know you want to stay connected with Dixie Decker. I don't know anybody else like her. She's fantastic as, I mean, you all have just gotten introduced to her, but to stay connected with her, I know you all are gonna want to uh, take advantage of this free training and class that she has. So Dixie, uh, before we started the show, the URL I wrote down is, so we're gonna put it right up here, folks, right on the video if you're watching YouTube on one of my channels, or now if you're listening, uh, iTunes, Google Play, et cetera. So here's the special website to get to register to get Dixie's free training and class. It's www.jayconner.com -E forward slash Dixie, D-I-X-I-E. 
Uh, Dixie, as we're as we're wrapping up, I know you got to run out the door. You got another meeting you're going you're coming uh, you're going off to, but um, just one last question here, Dixie, and that is, what advice? What's some of the best advice you could give to a new real estate investor? You were a new well, you weren't a new real estate investor five years ago. You had been doing it the traditional way, like I did years ago. But for that new real estate investor, what's your advice? Well, I think that I think it's pretty simple and it all kind of goes hand in hand. And the first thing is the education, which they're already getting by listening here to you and what you give every time you're on the air is education, which leads into a mentor, same thing they're getting with you or progress into with you or I into something more one-on-one. -on -one. And in saying that, when they do both of those items, don't reinvent the wheel. Just do as you're taught and it will come. <laughs> if you leave our classes or you leave um, an event or whether it's online or live and you go home to rewrite the entire manual you just heard you're not making money doing that so the first year after being introduced to I call this the new world of real estate I went out and did 37 deals that first year I didn't care what kind of deal they were if they made more than $500 I was on it because $500 to a girl who was broke was like $5,000. So start somewhere. And as you get better, the quality will get better and you will have greater successes. So sometimes we leave these things and we think we're going to get rich overnight. Well, you're not. Although it seems like five years feels like overnight for me. But you have to work the system you were just taught and take action every day. To so I think education, mentor, and don't recreate the system is the three most important things. And they all kind of go hand in hand, I think. Yes. So. Dixie Decker, you are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, amazing. Jay. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. And be sure and tell Brandon that Carol Joy and I said hello to him as well. I will. I think we'll be seeing you guys in a few short weeks. And, and you know how he is. Every time I get a microphone in my hand, he disappears. So, you know, <laughs> I know. He, does, he does help me out at, at the events and such. But uh, when I get to do a podcast, he's like a mouse in the closet. It's just not his... Uh, platform but he is a plethora of knowledge and a super fun partner in in the business and in our personal life and and I'm lucky to have him and and we're both lucky to have people like you who have openly shared your successes with us because we couldn't have moved forward without that so thank you so much for being you yes well you're welcome Dixie and thank you so much for sharing all right, folks. Well, there you have it. Here's another episode and show of um, the podcast, Jay Connor, uh, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor and uh, Dixie. Again, thank you so much. Y'all take advantage one more time of Dixie's uh, training, her free training that she's offering online. Here it is one more time at www.jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash Dixie, D-I-X-I-E. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's at taking your real estate investing career to the next level until the next show. Bye for now.